Hello, my friends. Welcome to this second episode of this series called Spiritual Science. My name is Carlos Guterres, and I'm sharing with you the result of 50 years of research and practice. But you know, my intention is not to tell you this is the path of this is the truth. Because I'm sure the spiritual journey is an individual journey. And each one will find their own path. You know, it's like we are crossing a huge desert. There's no roads, no highways. Just few signs. So each one will have to create and discover or discover their own path. But you know the experience other people can exchange can be useful. This is what happens with me. In my journey, I have many teachers and they share their experience and it is really helpful for me in some moments of my journey. So this is the main purpose of this sequence of videos I'm recording and sharing with all of you. So today we will continue the topic presented on the last episode. We began on last episode to talk about the two spiritual paths. You know, the spiritual journey offer, is always offering us two possibilities, two ways. But first of all, what is the spiritual journey? It's a search for freedom. But you know, many people don't feel trapped. So why look for this need for freedom? The reason is because we forget that we are multi-dimensional beings and you are imprisoned in this four-dimensional manifestation. In many chapters of last year, I explain and I share a lot of details about this imprisonment we have on the four dimension experience. So if you're interested, you can go to the videos related to the first year of our series and you'll find a lot of a lot of information. And to look for freedom, you know the liberation begins when we awaken to be aware of who we are and find the answer for the three basic questions to this awakening. You know, these three basic questions are part of the uh, spirit tradition and we can find in many different uh, teachings from different sources. And even in the mythology, it was expressed by the Sphinx, from Thebes that proposed to three, those three questions to allow people to pass. So when you think about the Sphinx, it's not a, really a monster, it's the Sphinx is life. So the three questions asked by the Sphinx of life is who am I? Where do I come from and where will I go? If you want to add one more, the four questions um, may be 
Why am I here? So, you know, all those questions are inviting us to begin a journey to know myself, an inner journey. So in the moment we begin to think of, about those questions, it represents an awakening. And when you have this awakening, we begin, realize all the potential, all the potential that are trapped, is trapped on this four dimensional manifestation. And so we begin a journey, a spiritual journey, looking for freedom. So the spiritual journey offers two paths. The path of devotion. And this path is illuminated by the energy of the planet Jupiter. And the other path is the path of the knowledge, inspired by the superior energy of the planet Venus. On the last episode, I presented you the path of knowledge. But probably many of you are asking, why Venus? What is the relation between Venus and the knowledge? You know, usually you think about Venus uh, related to beauty, love, balance. But you know, there's a very important quality of Venus that many people simply don't know. This quality is idealism. So the superior energy of Venus is idealism, charity, compassion. So if you want to know more about the path of knowledge, you have the episode one available. Today, I'm dedicated to explain more about this path of devotion. As I present at the very beginning of this series on the first year, nature hides profound secrets. And one of the most important of nature's secrets is that the manifested universe is expressed through seven different dimensions or seven different planes. So to be in manifestation, our consciousness or our spirit, if you prefer, have the right to access to access all those dimensions, all those seven planes or dimensions. In the path of knowledge, we anchor our consciousness in a dimension, the third one. And it allows us to be guided by intuition, and by the desire to know more about ourselves and about the universe, to unveil the profound mysteries of nature and understand that all the seven individual dimensions are reflections of the cosmic dimensions. But the path of devotion is different. When you seek this path, we move in a different rhythm, in a different way, because we want to skip, we want to skip some steps. In this case, we are anchored in the superior area of the emotional dimension. As I mentioned before, the emotional dimension have two levels. The lower level is the level of sensations and the superior level is the level of devotions. So 
To follow this path, we are anchored in the air of the devotions. And this area is supported by faith and compassion. So the individual who decide for this path goes directly from the emotional dimension to the psychic dimension and from this dimension to the wisdom. And when you are, you are on the wisdom dimension, you have glimpse of the divine plan, of the divine dimension. But if you think you are taking a shortcut, skipping some dimensions, it's a big mistake because to keep going according this devotional path, it's asked you a lot of dedication, a lot of focus, a lot of energy, but it's a possibility. So the path of devotion presents us seven items to follow, like the path of knowledge. So we have, we need a total surrender to faith and prayer. We have to begin by seeking to directly connect to divine through the three states of meditation. We need to be in constant communion with the higher self. We need to experience in long periods of contemplative connection, fully immersed in the energy emanated from the higher planes like the plane, dimension of wisdom and the divine dimension. We need to express the true charity and share and share the received energy with the less fortunate. We need combined periods of retreat for meditation with periods of dedicated to others to practice charity and to help the entire mankind. And finally, we have an item that is the same we will find in the path of knowledge. We need to promote the union with our soul. So let's take a look item by item. The first one is total surrender to faith and prayer. So first we need to understand the different kinds of prayer. You know, we have one kind of prayer we are asking for the divine. We are begging for the higher plans, blessings, protections. We're asking for something. And we have a different kind of prayer that we, we are just express, expressing how, how thankful we are. So in the path of devotion, this is the way you have to pray, expressing how thankful we are. Because the first way, the first uh, kind of prayer where we are begging, where, where we are asking, we are diminishing the divine. Because consciously or not, we are proposing exchange, we are bar bargaining to the divine. Because you say, please protect me and in exchange I will pray to you during one hour every day. So it's a, it's a, a bargain. You, you are negotiating with the higher spheres. So it's a very little understanding about how profound is the divine. But in the moment you know that superior 
intelligence, know what we need, and they provide exactly what we need to follow our journey. We just need to express how thankful we are. On this journey, you need to experience a deep communion with the subtle and the superior realms. We use the feeling to deepen the communion with the creative energy of the universe. So on this case, you don't use the intellect, you use the, sen the, the feeling. We use our intuition. And finally, we need to learn to dissolve any and all submission we have to our ego or personality, but without trying to destroy it. You know, many schools, many spiritual schools suggest that we need to kill our ego. It's not possible, first of all, because our ego is part of ourselves. If we, we kill our ego, if we have the possibility to kill our ego, we lose our humanity. Because to be a human being means to have an ego. So what you need is to learn. We don't need to be controlled by our ego. We are here to educate, to help our ego to evolve to, but never try to destroy it because I believe it's almost impossible. The second item on this journey is begin by seeking to directly connect to the divine through the three states of meditation. I already talked about this, three stages of meditation on the episodes number eight and nine of the previous uh, year of this series. You know, meditation, we have many different modalities, but the meditation that helps us to follow a spiritual journey presents three stages. The first one is concentration. It just means you have to change the focus from outside to inside. In the moment you look inside, you focus to go deeper inside, you're beginning the process we call concentration. The second stage is when you are in your center when you are in your inner center and stay calm and still, you're ready to listen to your inner voice, the voice of a higher self. So your inner, inner voice is invite you to just listen. And you listen what you need to listen, to go ahead. And finally, the deeper stage of meditation we call contemplation. It happens when you realize you are the real temple of the divine and that you are in the major chamber of this temple. So you can have a direct connection with the higher spheres of the direct connection with the divine. So when you are working on this level, you have to abandon the intellectual search and leave the med meditative experience fully. For this, you need to anchor the entire experience based on the senses, not in the intellect. And later, you need to learn to become your own master. You don't need external masters. You, by yourself, will personalize <clears throat> your 
search your personalized or medit meditative practice according your own needs, according your own level of understanding. The third item is being in constant communion with the higher self. On the first year of this uh, sequence of videos, I explain a lot, I, give, I share a lot of information about the higher self. This is the first step of our spiritual journey is to seek the higher self with total dedication. And then you have to identify him or her during the search to start a, to interact, to start a direct conversation with your higher self. And keep deepening this search and this interaction more and more. Our higher self is our first real master, is our first real mind on this journey. When we finally identify and begin this interaction with the higher self, this we call the real initiation. So we are ready to give the first step on this journey. <clears throat> the fourth item on this journey to, to follow this path is experiencing long periods of contemplative connection, fully immersing in the energy emanate from the higher plans, like the dimensions from wisdom and the divine dimension. And when you do this, we are permeating the manifested body with the pure energy of the spiritual dimensions. But not only this, we need to fix this subtle energy in each of our atoms and each of our cells. And then we need to learn to preserve this energy, to conserve this energy that fills our whole being. The fifth step, the fifth item, is to experience the true charity and share the received energy mentioned in the item number four with the less fortunate. You know, many people manifested in this world A large number of these people manifested, our brothers and sisters in mankind, they have good hearts, good intentions, but they had no opportunity to awaken for the spiritual journey, or simply they didn't find the way So after to go deeper in meditation and to, to connect to the spiritual realm and receive the energy as blessings from above, we need to practice charity, the real charity, that kind of charity that we practice and nobody knows. And what you have to do is to spreading the accumulated spiritual energy we had in all our essence, in our atoms, in our cells. Share this special energy because it will nurture the manifestation of life. This is an important thing to understand. We have life and you have manifestation of life. Life, life is eternal. Life never ends. But the manifestation of life is this period we have here in the world. Sometimes 
People call it incarnation. This is the manifestation of life. So the manifestation of life has a beginning and an end. So it's a cycle. But when we share the accumulate energy, we are helping people to use the time they receive to be here in a more productive, in a more efficient way. So this is huge. And finally, we need to understand that the art of spiritual healing is the highest expression of charity and compassion. I'm not telling you to become healers. I'm just telling you that when you are filled with this spiritual energy, your presence helps to bring more balance and harmony to the environment you are. So I'm not asking you to, to make speeches or to, to produce, give sessions, healing sessions. Your simple presence in any environment will expand the energy you accumulate and you help everybody near you to find a most harmonious way to live their lives. This is a huge expression of spiritual healing. The sixth, sixth item on our list is to combine periods of retreat for meditation with periods dedicated to others and to the mankind. <clears throat> so this item combines the item five and six. We need to retreat, stay with ourselves in a deep uh, state of meditation and contemplation to receive. And you know, when you are on these states of contemplation, we are literally inhaling the light and higher blessings. We're impregnating this energy in each one of our atoms. And then you go outside to exhale these light and blessings and share these with the others and share these with the entire mankind. So now what you have to do is keep practicing both actions. It's like a breath. We inhale, light, we inhale, harmonious energies, and we exhale to help people who need this, to help the planet, to help the entire mankind. This is the work for those who decide for the path of devotion. And finally, the seven is to promote union with our own soul. But first we need to unveil the mystery of the soul. This is the mystery of all mysteries, to know really more about our soul. And after to understand this, we need to find it. We need to find out where is the soul and how to access our own soul. And finally, and this is not easy, we need to allow the soul to be the guide in the journey to the eternity, back home. A journey back to the eternity is our journey home. And our soul is the unique guide who knows the path and the unique guide who has the right to follow this path. So this is the path of devotion. You know, for some, uh, this path is always known as the path of love. And some people 
who had a superficial uh, idea about this path. Some people call this the path of sacrifice, but it's not true. There's no sacrifice in the moment. You know what you are looking for. One more thing. For us who are following our inner voice on this journey we call spirituality, for those who are dedicated to understand, for those who are designed to study this knowledge as a spiritual science, we have the in understanding to use both paths. So, you know, we can follow the path of the knowledge and at the same time we can follow the path of devotion. Why not? So we have the free will to decide to follow the, both paths. Well, my friends, this is what I, I was thinking to share with you on this video. I know that's a lot. But you know, this is a beautiful journey. So thank you to follow me until here. And if you like this presentation, please don't forget to give a like, or if you don't like, give a dislike, but it's really important. And if you want to receive future uh, videos, you may subscribe on my channel. My channel is called Carlos Guterres, and you'll find it on YouTube. Thank you so much and see you on the next episode. Bye.